in the region of $20,000 to $30,000. Oh, my Lord. In her family for generations, probably bought by her great aunt who traveled to many places and made grand tours, this is how this wonderful piece by Charles Theodore Ferrer came to America. The painting is from circa 1850, an example of the Orientalist school made in oil canvas. Charles was a neoclassicist and lived in the 19th century's rage of Orientalism, adding a tremendous historical value to this piece and many others of his. A beautiful painting representing an Oriental market must have had tremendous value, but how much is it worth? And conservatively today, I would easily expect in the region of $20,000 to $30,000. Oh, my Lord. Does that mean I have to get it insured? <laughs> you might want to do that. Thanks wow, for bringing it. I'm just blown away. <laughs> the guest brought this Rookwood pottery mug to the show. The pottery mug is quite distinctive in the sense that Rookwood produced this mug in varieties of decorative styles ranging from Art Nouveau to Victorian and many others. This particular mug belongs to the late Victorian styled category and was produced around 1896 courtesy of the date inscription at the bottom. The mug was quite popular at the time because of the transparent brownish color glaze that was used to cover the decoration on the mug. With the mug still in perfect condition without any dents, it should be worth around $1,500 in retail value. So your mugs are worth about $6,000. <laughs> the State Historical Society of North Dakota features a collection of pictographs by Hunk Papa leader Joseph No Two Horns depicting events from his life as a warrior. Born around 1852, Joseph lived a long life and began his warrior days at 14, becoming a mature warrior by the Battle of the Little Bighorn. This pictograph depicts a crucial battle moment when his horse was wounded, symbolizing his dedication as a Kit Fox Society member to fight fiercely to protect himself or his comrade. The shield depicted in the pictograph, likely a replica of his actual shield, was conceived in a vision and depicts a thunderbird, symbolizing protection and strength. Joseph's ledger drawings, often on scraps provided by officers, are highly valued. His known identity and historical significance could fetch fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. It's always amazing to hear the story and the history of, of the pieces that we're talking about, but to be standing next to the actual pieces. Thanks so much for sharing them with us. Mark, thank you very much. This is a scrimshawed whalebone ditty box, likely made by a sailor around 1830 to 1840. It's a prized possession with a fascinating history. Originally owned by the guest father's cousin, who lived in Asia from 1915 to 1936, the box was given to the guest in 1960. Adorned with intricate floral arrangements and a small memorial scene, the box showcases exquisite craftsmanship and is made from the jawbone of a sperm whale. Despite its uncertain origin and journey, the box's rarity and design contribute to its value, estimated to be between six to eight thousand dollars in today's market. Wow. I had no idea. That's why I brought it. I, as I say, I got it in '60, and I knew nothing about it. So I, it's why I come to Roadshow. I wanted to learn something. A guest showcased an automaton inherited from his mother. It had been given to her mother by a family friend in 1931. Prior to that, it had been displayed at Macy's in downtown San Francisco. The intriguing item was made by a French firm, Lambert. The appraiser identified Leopold Lambert as one of the great makers of French automatons from the late 19th century to the early 20th century. Specifically, this one was a magician automaton, operated by winding it up. This is a classic. It's a magician. When it operates, he bangs the cone with his wand two or three times, lifts it, and various things appear. Mm -hmm. It also had a built-in music box. These automatons were not toys, but rather decorative pieces to intrigue children. Despite having condition issues, its value was estimated to be around ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Wow, that's crazy! I didn't realize it would be that much. The host presented field trip architecture remnants, 
This is the arch that served as the entrance to the old Chicago Stock Exchange, designed in 1893. Some buildings are still standing, but many buildings no longer exist, like the Chicago Stock Exchange. Standing in front of this incredible elevator bank from the first floor of the Chicago Stock Exchange, built by the Adler & Sullivan firm, Louis Sullivan was the father of the modern skyscraper. It's a symphony of motifs from the period, and it's a classic Sullivan. When the building was demolished, sadly, in 1972, some survived. Frank Lloyd Wright, one of his most famous students, undoubtedly is one of America's greatest architects. This work was built for the Avery Coonley Playhouse in Riverside, Illinois. He called it the Kinder Symphony. Kinder Symphony was appraised for a $400,000 range or more. Well, it's just beautiful, as are all of the architectural relics you see here in the museum, but you certainly picked two wonderful ones to showcase. Thanks so much, Lee. In a detective style, he discovered the original painter, having the painting with him for a long while to discover, and now presenting it for appraisal for the first time. The painting is from circa 1880 by Luis Jimenez y Aranda, a Spanish-French painter, and it represents the naturalist style he adhered to at the time under the influence of Paris. The painting has taken some damage, and the canvas is starting to fall down. But even damaged, this wonderful piece is still valuable. So, how much is it worth? I think for a piece like this, I think it's a really nice example. At auction, I would expect it to fetch somewhere in the $10,000 to $15,000. Really? Yeah. My yeah. goodness. I've enjoyed it since a child. I'm thrilled that I got to come on the Antiques Roadshow. Thank, Thank you so much. Oh, no, not at all. It's my pleasure. She and her husband bought this painting for $40 in Niles, which ended up being one of the most famous paintings. It was painted in 1877 by Jules Tavernier, a French artist who moved to America. He made illustrations for Harper's and opened a studio in Montgomery Street that became a very visited place, with figures like Oscar Wilde going there. He was a bohemian with an agitated life and died early, but many of his paintings survived. And this one is a clear example of his excellence as an artist. But how much is it worth? I think comfortably at auction, this would make $5,000 to $8,000. Good. That's great. That's a good investment. This guest brought a folk art painted chest that was gifted to him by a friend in 1963. This is a fine piece with its origin traced to Old Sturbridge Village in Massachusetts. The well-painted chest was manufactured with poplar wood, mostly found in the mid-Atlantic states. The initials JME on the front and the year inscribed on it indicate that the furniture was made in 1810. Additionally, the painted decorations are incredibly intricate, serving as a remarkable differentiator. While this is an exciting piece, the origin of this furniture is somewhat distorted due to disparities in its structure compared to those made in Massachusetts. This piece is valued at around eight to twelve thousand dollars. Because of the regional strengths of those markets. As the wife of a collector, she kept this piece in her home for forty years, acquiring it at an estate sale in Iowa for fifty to one hundred dollars. The axe is probably from the seventeenth century, an Italian piece, Venetian. It has a beautiful acanthus design that helps with the dating and shows the wonder of the artwork. It's made of beautiful and rare wood, probably more used in inside decoration. The axe may have been used for small works, but it's still very conserved. Given the unique building and the decorative style of the piece, it's quite valuable. But what's the appraisal? I think conservatively, a retail price for this would be between four and $6,000. Great. That's very good. Thank you. The guest came with a New Orleans folding map. He brought this map of the city of New Orleans in 1845 and was a student in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's a hand-colored lithograph from 1845. It's a folding map. It's in very nice condition. Any pre-Civil War American folding maps are particularly collectible. The map appraised for $3,500 to $4,000. Excellent. Her parents were antiquarians and bought a desk in the 50s, but you'd never guess what was inside of it. Upon opening the drawer, they found many presidential letters. 
This particular letter is signed by Abraham Lincoln from Illinois in the 1860s. Usually, Lincoln had many people writing to him, but would not write back. But not in this case, as he wrote to Mr. William Jones, his first employer and mentor in Indiana. The letter is quite valuable, given its historical significance for American history. But how much is it worth? But a letter of this importance, and with this content and historical importance, would have an auction estimate today of probably conservatively thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Oh so my a little goodness. bit more than a couple of hundred. <laughs> I cannot believe it. The next item was a gift to the grandfather of the owner's husband. He received this as a gift from the Bourbon County Agricultural Society for having the best herd of cattle in 1874. He was my husband's great-grandfather. He was a cattleman all of his life. He sold a magnificent bull to a gentleman for a huge sum of money. I think at that time it was $35,000. This silver and glass presentation decanter shines like pearls. On the bottom, W and H represent Wood and Hughes, an American silver company. It is pure sterling silver. The silver holder's masks are wonderful and highly decorated. The glass bottles are from Europe, probably Bohemian. Being a historical piece, its value is... I would say five to $7,000 for retail value. Hmm. I'm surprised. Thank you very much. Well, thank That's you very, very much for bringing it. A posthumous gift from his next-door neighbor, who got it from his Uncle Harry, who lived close to Fenway Park, this beautiful baseball is said to have been a gift from the Yankees. The ball is signed by 21 team members, matching the team configuration in 1928, plus a signature from Matty Matthews, probably a friend of the players. The ball is very well preserved, and so are the signatures, including that of Babe Ruth. The ball is quite valuable, but not as much as the owner thinks. Uh, that had 20 signatures, and this one has 22, uh, for about 150000 So that's as close as I could get to. Okay. Yeah. So how much is it worth? ball at auction would sell for between $25,000 and $35,000. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That's excellent. That's excellent. Like I say, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a Colt Army revolver, also called Peacemaker, a magnificent gun from the 1880s. The Colt was one of the most important brands of that century, having a major presence during the Civil War. Having a beautiful gold wash and being very well preserved, this gun is a major collectible for fans of arms. But how much is it worth? On recent evaluations, it's worth $30,000. Inheriting from her grandmother, who went to the University of Dakota, she chose this pottery and a yearbook out of her items. The UND, located in Grand Forks, is a historical university founded in 1883. The yearbook has a photo of her grandmother in it, as an art student. And this beautiful pottery was a gift made by Margaret Cable around 1926. It's an unusual style of decoration for the university, which adds a lot to the piece. Furthermore, it has a wonderful background history. So, what's the value? I think because it is an underglazed style of decoration, it's very pretty, that the value at auction would probably be between $1,000 and $1,500. Okay. Thank you very much. The guest came with an autographed Arthur Bishop Jeffries Vikings of the Air painting. He got this painting from his father. His father was an aviation buff, and he got this painting as a collateral from a Lady Neville. The signatures of famous pilots were on it when he got it. The painting was done by Arthur Bishop Jeffries. We have this incredible scene called Vikings of the Air, an aviation scene. But what makes this oil on canvas so incredibly special, besides its theme, is the signatures. Ten or twelve signatures here. It's just incredible. This is an extraordinary special painting, not just because of the subject matter, but because of the signatures as well. The painting appraised for ten to $15,000. My dad uh, thought very highly of it. 